It looks like there's nowhere to go but inside. I can't get through here, and I can't dig. can pick up some items. I can put my items down in certain places. After some aimless wandering, I come across a note by the fireplace in the parlor. Walking back and forth brings me to this forest. Circling one way brings me to a sweltering forge. Circling the other way leads to this imposing throne room. In the back of the library, I find a narrow spiral staircase. It leads to a book of folklore and a tale of three princes who fled their thrones. Returning to the throne room behind the west throne, I see toppled tombstones. Running straight west brings me to a graveyard. Behind the north throne is a small pond. Running north brings me to a lake with a small island in the middle. The final throne on the east sits before a tank of lava.
To the east I find a tower guarded by a moat of lava. Tucked away in the forest maze, I find an old shovel. The top of this earth mound looks a little loose. Breaking through reveals an axe. In the heart of the forest, I find this machine. This note suggests pewter for gears. In the parlor, a decorative pewter sword hangs from the wall. In the dining hall, this plate is made of pewter. In the bedroom wardrobe, this key is the last pewter item I find. A book in the library suggests an obsidian pot to melt pewter. The kitchen has an obsidian pot. A note in the forge tells me the heat I need to melt pewter can be found in one place here. Only one pipe coming from the furnace looks intact. Tracing the pipe's matching connections leads to this one hutch. With the pot beneath the correct heat source, the sword melts easily. The mold gives my gear shape, but now I need to solidify it. The ice in this room will quench my gear, and my axe will make quick work of the logs blocking my way. Once cooled, the finished gear pops out easily. My remaining pewter items will form the two more gears I need. Melting down a key? I never did find a pewter lock. With the gears in place, a throw of the lever and the machine creaks to life. A repeating sequence of colors lights up in front. Blue, red, yellow, green. Blue, yellow, red. In the bathroom is another color sequence below glass bottles. The 
the blue liquid is in plain view on the bedroom table. On a high shelf in the kitchen, the green liquid is harder to spot. In the potion brewing room, red and yellow are on the wall. The recipe from the bathroom shelf produces a purple liquid. I can bottle this and set it to the side for a moment. The color sequence from the forest machine turns the cauldron black. A black iron key hangs over the kitchen fire pit. It opens a black iron door in the prison. Pouring the black potion on this altar reveals a coin. In the graveyard, it looks like I can dig these graves with my shovel. This larger tomb reveals a hidden crypt. A gold crown is free for the taking here. There is another gold crown at the lake, but I can neither take it nor climb onto the island. There seem to be invisible barriers over the water. Starting from this one odd dirt patch, I can jump onto an invisible platform. Sneaking allows me to follow the twists and turns. It seems like a dead end, but I can jump onto a raised section. The axe cuts through the weak tree trunk. Now, standing on the island, the second crown is mine. The folklore book suggests that the tower is surrounded by an illusion. It looks like the lava is not dangerous after all. There's a passage here I can climb up to. At the top of the tower, another altar. The purple potion in exchange for the third crown. Back in the throne room, three gold thrones. Three gold crowns. And a chess piece as my prize. In the fountain room, colored runners associate colors to directions. Following the forest machine sequence, East, south, west, north, east, west, south.
I arrive in a new room with massive clockwork and a bottomless void. A note here suggests that I need to find a code. In the observatory, this star chart seems to suggest a sequence of locations. The skull leads to the graveyard where I find a clock on the wall. There's a piano in the parlor and another clock. At the top of the tower, another clock and a different time. A clock on the wall in the potions room. And finally, in the forge where I made the gears. Returning to the clock room once again, I carefully jump over the pit. The starting position of the clock is already correct for the first entry. Completing the code produces a pocket watch. In the library, a book on superstition suggests a ritual involving flowers and a gravesite. I find a green flower in the middle of the garden. I find a blue flower in the parlor. There is a red flower in the dining hall. A yellow flower is in the bathroom. And finally, well hidden in the forest, is the white flower. Returning to the graveyard crypt, I put one flower in each pot. Like the book says, the white one in the middle goes last. Another sequence of directions, north, east, west, north, east. Following those directions leads me to a room with an octagon of unlit candles. The shed in the graveyard has a lighter. In this room, an octagon of braziers, each representing a candle, the shortest burning longest, lit earliest.
lighting the candles in the sequence from the brazier room. The correct sequence summons an amulet. On a low floor in the tower is a gold key. The gold key unlocks the stage in the theater. A manuscript here describes an escape route using four items I already have. A book in the library gives me clues about the arrangement of my items. In the throne room, the missing throne must correspond to the final prince. Running south brings me to a surreal space with a golden spiral staircase. Following the clues from the book, I place the items on the altar. The way out is revealed at last. How long was I gone? 